The Schumann Fortress, the old town, towers picturesquely on the Schumann Plateau and is situated 3 km to the west of Schumann. Schumann is also known for the brewery and the best, or one of the best Bulgarian beer, the Schumansko, and also here the Tuborg is brewed for the moment. It has survived for more than 3000 years. The first settlement dates back to the early Iron Age in the 12th century BC. Fortifications were built by the Thracians, so the tribe of Gedae, in the 5th century BC. There was a fortress in the Roman, so 2nd to uh, 4th century, and the Byzantine from the 5th to the 6th century age, in the early Middle Ages, in the 8th to 10th century too. The Schumann Fortress one of the great military and strategic significance. In the time of the Second Bulgarian State, so in the 12th to the 14th century, it became a major medieval town with impressive fortifications and remarkable cult and residential architecture. The important strategic position determined its a significant role in the history of the Bulgarian state. The highest top of the fortress area is 493 meters above sea level. <sighs> this is the entrance of the Schumann Fortress. And, well, I have to dub the sound because we are all so tired and nobody is really able to speak because we are only working and we are really thirsty. But what's important, Schumann is a town with the most famous Bulgarian beer, the Schumansko beer. So it works really when it's not for the history and for the castle to make a tour to Schumann to have a glass of Schumansko beer. In Bulgaria we have never to forget that between 1393 and 1876, so during 500 years, Bulgaria was a part of the Ottoman Empire. And today still around 9% of Bulgarian's populations are Turkish and also many have been uh, converted to the Islam. Behind me here is Veliko Preslav. Veliko Preslav in the Preslav mountains. This was the second capital town of Bulgaria during the 9th century. Preslav was the capital of the first Bulgarian Empire from 893 to 972 and one of the most important cities of the medieval southeastern Europe. The name Preslav is of Slavic origin and apparently it was initially founded and functioned as a Slavic settlement until its fortifications at the beginning of the 9th century. The proximity to the then Bulgarian capital of Pliska led to the fast development and expansion of Preslav during the reign of the Counts Krum and Ormutak. By the time of the coronation of Count Boris I in 852, Preslav had turned into an important strategic military center. A number of churches were built in the city after the conversion of the Bulgarians to Christianity in 864. The pagan revolt of Pliska nobility, led by Prince Vladimir in 892, was decisive for the future destiny of the city. In 893, Vladimir was dethroned and during the council of Preslav, Boris I pointed Simeon the Great as his successor and decided to move the capital of the state from the still somewhat pagan Pliska to Preslav. In the following uh, 80 years, the city developed rapidly, turning into a center not only of Bulgarian politics and diplomacy, but also of culture, literature and the fine arts. The city peaked in its growth and magnificence in the middle of the rule of Tsar Peter I of Bulgaria. 
In view of the impressive town planning, the vital economy and the grandeur of buildings like the Round Church and the Royal Palace, Preslav was a true rival of the largest and most important city centers in the Western Hemisphere. Here is now the castle of Tsar Simeon the Great. Tsar Simeon the Great from 893 to 927. And this was his capital city, the first Bulgarian Empire. I will show you now around here what was his castle. Culturally, it was the center of the Preslav Literary School, which was founded in Pliska in 886 and was moved to Preslav along with the rest of the Kurd in uh, 893. It was probably around the Preslav Literary School that the Cyrillic alphabet developed in the middle of the 10th century. The city's fortune underwent a dramatic downturn at the end of the 960s when it was occupied by Kievan Prince Sviatoslav. The ensuing war between Ruthenians and Byzantines left the city burned and ravaged by the army of Byzantine Emperor John I, Tsimisis. The conquerors took away the treasury, the Bulgarian Tsar's regalia, and a large part of the library of Simeon. Our faulty city did not lose its importance in the next 300 years. The neighboring outskirts and the big monasteries became desolate. The economy lost its vitality and significance. The Tatar raids during the 1270s drove away the last citizens of Preslav, along with the proto-throned bishop of the city. Some of the surviving refugees built up a village of the same name only two kilometers north from the city. Really interesting is that near the church of the 9th and 10th century we have in the same time also a pagan temple near the same site and here only 50 meters far from the church and a really impressive gate. <laughs> Under the UNESCO rules everything what is new you have to see what is new it must be distinct from what is old and there are only some parts reconstructed to show how how it looks before so what we don't have to forget always in bulgaria the history begins uh, 3000 years it's a 3000 years old history beginning with the neolithic after the Cetraceans, but especially here in this region uh, the roman promised land to the goth and the goth they were not very satisfied because the Roman cheated on them and they would only protect this frontier from the incoming slaves. The slaves were mixed with the Proto-Bulgars and of this was made the Tsardom or the Kingdom of the Tsars and that is, uh, uh, dare we speak, uh, from the 4th century. 7th century, uh, the Byzantine uh, Empire, the splitting of the Byzantine Empire, creation of the church, 5th century creation of the Orthodox Church, separation from Rome, the real separation by another language, by another alphabet. And this alphabet has especially invented by Kirill and Method that the Slavic could not read the Latin Bible.
It's about time to organize something to eat. <laughs> If you don't like chicken, Or maybe a coco vin. So, if maybe you are not really hungry, there is also the possibility there are also midget chicken. So, it's only for the little hunger. Those are midget. <laughs> We have also food for atheists. Kajito, <laughs> 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 hello YouTube. Hello YouTube. <laughs> Little kitchen, bathroom, bathroom. Well, okay, our thing, air condition, satellite TV, nice little bathroom, typical Bulgarian bathroom, only with the shower and this shower. Okay, without nothing, it's everything on the floor directly, but it is typical here, you have it everywhere. So, and all this, I think it's a really nice flat, a really nice space, and all this we pay for this first night, Day, it was really marathon. <laughs> Tomorrow it will be slower. We are now in Pliska. Pliska is the first capital town of Bulgaria. And tomorrow we will see here around the archaeological sites uh, around here in this area. We have a nice room here and we will really enjoy this night. I think. We will sleep very well with all what we have done today. So, again, Australia, see you tomorrow. <laughs>